Have you ever done something embarrassing when you thought nobody was watching? Like dancing around your room in your underwear or singing your heart out? Now, how embarrassed would you be if your crush saw you? Well, that's exactly what happened to me in my first year of college. You can call me Jessica. Yeah, it's not my real name, but I don't want anyone looking me up and bringing this horror story back in my life. Ugh. My face gets so red just thinking about it, and I'm still dealing with the problems from people not respecting my privacy. I hope, if nothing else, my embarrassing story can be a lesson on what can go horribly wrong when your information is made public. Before that, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. If you do, your favorite celebrity will follow you back this week. Ugh, I would have killed to have one of my favorite pop stars follow my Instagram. Unfortunately, I don't post as much as I used to. See, my dream was actually to be a pop star. I was obsessed with singing and dancing and fashion. Right before bed, I would always dress up in ridiculous, flashy clothes and put on a show in my bedroom. I always wore a boa and a mask. There was something so freeing about letting loose after wearing a boring uniform all the time. One day, I did something pretty stupid, though. I was watching YouTube, just like you, and I said to myself, I need to get on YouTube. I spent the whole night recording, but when it came to actually post them, I got a little shy. I was super cringy now that I got a chance to look at myself. Still, they were a lot of fun to make, and I ended up recording a bunch of videos throughout middle school. By the end, I had about 20 videos I kept on my laptop. They were my dirty little secret and biggest obsession, that is, until boys started coming into the picture. Coming from an all-girls middle and elementary school, I was so excited when I got to my co-ed high school. There were boys everywhere. Unfortunately, I never actually learned how to interact with boys before. Every time I tried to talk to one of these gorgeous creatures, my knees would buckle and I'd stumble over my words. I was also really desperate for a boyfriend and got a little too excited when a guy started a conversation with me. This one moment haunted me forever. I can't believe I'm going to share it with you. Pay attention because this is actually where a lot of my problems started. So this one time there was this super popular guy having a huge party. Let's call him Doug. He didn't exactly invite me to his party, but I just kind of showed up with some friends. I kind of had a crush on him, even though I didn't know him so well. I thought this would be my moment to show people how cool and fun I was. I was outgoing and friendly. Lots of people were laughing at my jokes and stories. Or so I thought. While I was dancing in his living room, people cheered and clapped for me to do my own kind of solo. All eyes were on me, and I felt like a star. Suddenly, Doug approached me. I thought at first that he wanted to ask me to dance. He came over and whispered in my ear, I have something I'd like to tell you. Maybe not with so many people around, he asked. This was it. I have a crush on you too, I blurted out. If anyone was looking away before, they were staring now. This super pretty upperclassman threw her cup at him. Seriously, Doug? Are you trying to cheat on me? She screamed and started running away. No, babe, it was a misunderstanding. I was just trying to tell her to fix her dress, he shouted back, running towards her. My dress? Well, I'll never know for sure, but let's just say people were probably not laughing at my jokes. Instead, they were probably laughing at my fashion mistakes. Not only did I tuck my dress into my underwear, showing everyone the childish bunny print granny panties I had worn, but I must have sat in cake sometime during my time socializing. Not just any cake, chocolate cake. I didn't even try to defend myself. I ran off crying. I don't know what was more embarrassing, the underwear or the fact that I blurted my feelings for a guy in front of his girlfriend. I know what you're thinking. How could this get any worse? Well, trust me, it does. As you can imagine, I wasn't very popular after that. People made fun of me in the hallways all the time. Someone even smooshed chocolate cake all over my locker. You could say I was a bit depressed. I wanted to be a star, and now I was just so timid and boring. The only people I ever saw were my parents and their work friends. Sometimes their boss would bring his son, but to be honest, he was incredibly unattractive and creepy. I know that sounds shallow, but I'm sure you wouldn't want to hang out with him either. Part of the problem was, he thought that being rich automatically means girls had to like him. He smelled really bad and never wore clean clothes. He was also incredibly overweight, and one day he left a sweat stain all over my mom's chair. Then he proceeded to tell me how lucky I would be to have a guy like him. When I turned him down, he went on a rant about how girls don't like nice guys, and I only turned him down because I'm shallow. Newsflash, Conrad, you're just a jerk that happens to be ugly. Bad combo. 
After that unfortunate event, I asked myself, is this what my life is really coming to? Fighting with some rich kid about why I don't want to date him? Here's a fun fact for you. Did you know that housing a guinea pig alone makes them depressed? In Switzerland, it's actually against the law to just have one. Well, I was just like that little depressed guinea pig. I just <laughs> slept and binged Netflix and surfed the web. I was fooling around on YouTube watching a bunch of videos when a My Story animated video popped up on my feed about a famous YouTuber. And while watching the video, I got a bunch of flashbacks to how I wanted to be a star as a kid. They were embarrassing, but fun. I found my old mask and boa and started making them again. I thought it would be therapeutic, and it kind of was. My 18-year-old body fit my outfits a lot nicer than before. I made my new videos a little hotter. It helped me feel pretty. I had to have made around 100 videos my senior year of high school. I kept them all on my laptop, of course, and never posted a thing. I would have died if they got out. When I started college, I decided to leave my video career behind me. I got a new laptop and left my video camera behind. I was determined to turn over a fresh leaf. I went to a school far away from my hometown so I could forget everything about the bullying and embarrassment. During orientation, it was fantastic. I met a bunch of awesome people who knew nothing about me. Better yet, there were a ton of hot boys. I was super happy and excited. That is, until I made it to my first class. There in the front row was none other than Doug. I still had a bit of a crush on him, but that didn't change the fact that he could ruin my reputation in a matter of seconds. I tried to hide behind other people when I walked in, but in the end, I was paired up with him for a mini presentation. I thought he was going to make fun of me or call me cake butt or something, but he just acted normal. After a while, I calmed down. Maybe he didn't recognize me. Wrong. When class was over, he asked to talk privately to me. Part of me was panicking that he was going to blackmail me. Another stupid part of me thought I was finally getting a confession after all. Turns out, neither was true. He wanted to let me know that he did remember me, but he promised not to say anything. He said that he never thought it was right for me to be bullied in the first place, and people were too harsh. On the outside, I was relieved and grateful. On the inside, Cupid was waging war. There was something about his kind of attitude that really added fuel to the fire of my passion. He was hot, rich, and nice. Before I got a chance to fantasize anymore, some girl came and grabbed Doug's shoulder. Hey babe, she said, eyeing me up and down. Who is this? Oh, just a friend from back home, he answered cheerfully. She was a year below me in high school. Interesting, she sneered. Well, I have cheer practice, so I'll see you later for our date. Love you, babe. She started making out with him for a bit, and you can tell she did it for me. She wanted me to know he was hers and I was just some girl. It kind of dampened my spirits until he made a small comment after she left. Sorry about her, he said plainly. She just gets jealous when she sees me talking to pretty girls. I could feel my face immediately turn red. Like, I must have looked like a stop sign. He thought I was attractive? I couldn't really find words to express myself. He just chuckled cutely and went on his way. That was it. I had just booked a one-way ticket on the Doug train. Now, most girls would say this is my time to battle his girlfriend for his affections or slip into his DMs. Sadly, I am not that confident with guys, so I did the next best thing. I did an entire sweep of his social media. Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. If he had it, I saw it. I know it sounds a little intense, but how many of you can seriously say that you never Instagram stalked someone? Do I see any hands? No. Now, it may sound a bit hypocritical to post a video about having my privacy invaded while invading someone's privacy, but in all fairness, he posted them. If he wanted them to be private, he could have set up his account differently. I wanted to get to know him better, his likes and interests and so on. I started watching videos he liked on YouTube and even learned a bit about some of the fandoms he was into. It actually helped us make a lot of conversation. If watching a little Rick and Morty brought us closer together, it was worth it. One day though, I stumbled across a post that I didn't need to research anything about. See, I was only about a month or two back in his posts when I saw a comment about how hot something was. I always got a little hit in my stomach when he complimented girls in posts, but I'll admit this particular post had me a little conflicted. The post was a video of me, one of the ones I did privately at home. 
I didn't know how to respond. I was happy Doug thought I was attractive. Then again, did he know it was me? Most of all, who posted all these videos? After a little digging, I saw that they had posted all of my videos, all 100 of them. They had so many views and so many comments, some good and bad. I didn't know what to do. My heart was absolutely racing. How could someone do this? I wrote to the account myself. I asked who they were and why they had stolen my videos. Their response? That's what you get for messing with me. Immediately, my mind flashed to whom I could have upset. Conrad. It was 3 a.m. and I immediately got on the phone with Conrad. I was mad, but also a little scared. Like I said, some of these videos were really hot. My parents would not really approve. They might even cut me off. At first, Conrad denied knowing what I was talking about. I told him I needed those videos gone. I would do anything. Anything? He asked coyly. How about you go on a date with me? I felt like I didn't have a choice. So I agreed. Just one little date. How bad could it be? Well, it was a nightmare. He wore a dirty graphic t-shirt to a really fancy restaurant, and I kid you not, he ate some of the spaghetti with his hands and wiped the sauce on the expensive tablecloth. Anytime the waiter was slow, he would threaten to get them fired for embarrassing him in front of his new girlfriend. I was so embarrassed. I wanted that nightmare to end. I even had to dodge a few kisses from his dirty, greasy mouth. Sadly, the end was far away. When our date finally came to an end, I confronted him. There you go, you got your date. Can you please delete the videos now? I asked. He looked super uncomfortable. I started to cry. I did everything you asked. Please, this could ruin my life. He looked rather defeated for a moment and then revealed that he didn't actually know what I was talking about. He sickly took my desperation as a chance to show me a good time. Jokes on him because at the end of the night, I hated him more than ever. I was cursing him and screaming at him when he finally apologized. He said that he had a few friends in IT and maybe they could help me. I asked if this was another one of his dumb tricks to get me to hang out with him, but he promised it wasn't. He brought me to a loud dance club. I wanted to turn around, but he told me to trust him. My buddy lives downstairs, he said. I followed him through the dance club into the basement. In retrospect, it was pretty stupid of me. There, sitting at a computer, was this scrawny little guy with a My Little Pony tattoo. He was a hacker, and he said he'd be able to track who uploaded my videos. I was skeptical at first. I mean, my future was depending on the detective work of a tattooed brony who lived in a dance club. After a few minutes of typing away at his sticky keyboard, he gave me a name. I didn't recognize the name at first, so I decided to do one last round of social media stalking. It took me a second to recognize the culprit. It was none other than Doug's ex-girlfriend from high school. You remember the one that I confessed to Doug in front of? Conrad's friend recognized her immediately. They used to go out. He even still had on his phone. He told me I could use them as leverage to get control of that account. And it worked. She was super upset about it, but I had to fight fire with fire. I felt so much better after our conversation, and it was not because I was back in control. It turns out Doug yelled at her for making a scene back then in the party, and they ended up breaking up because of it. She never really got over it, so when she saw my parents selling my old laptop, she decided to buy it and see what dirt she could dig on me. When she found the videos, she uploaded all of them. Then she sent a link to Doug. Her plan backfired though, because he just thought it was hot, but he didn't recognize me because I was wearing a mask. When I heard this, I was so happy. I wrote Doug immediately and told him I was the one in the videos and I wanted to date him. Maybe posting these videos gave me the confidence I needed to pursue him. I got all dressed up in my nicest dress. It was actually the one I wore in one of the videos where he commented that I looked hot. He complained about the girls he dated in the past and how I was nothing like them. Now, try not to judge me, but we immediately jumped into a passionate relationship. He encouraged me to post videos and try to build an online following. Everything was great for a while. Sadly, my story does not end at our happily ever after. See, while I was busy obsessing over Doug, he never actually finished dating his other girlfriend. I only found out one day because I posted a video of the two of us on Instagram and she confronted me in the comments. I got so much backlash from the community thinking I was some kind of home wrecking trash. I tried to defend myself, but it was too late. I lost almost all of my followers overnight. I broke up with Doug the very next day. I was so hurt. It's been a few days now, and I think I am not fit to become famous. It's just too much drama.